Hello everyone, you're watching In Case You Missed It and this is what happened in round 22. We start with Melbourne and Demons fans, the drought is finally over. The D's into the finals for the first time since 2006 after a nail-biting win over West Coast at Optus Stadium on Sunday. Now, in a contest worthy of September and with their season on the line, the Demons started like a team possessed, kicking the opening four goals of the game. The Eagles, forced to rejig their attack with Jack Darling ruled out with concussion, finally got going. Liam Ryan chipping in while Willie Rioli produced some magic. Oh. Rioli <laughs> says, I don't need my hands. I can just strike it like one of the best international strikers in the world. It was an arm wrestle in the final term. Mark Lacroix had Dees fans on the edge of their seats when he put the Eagles in front for the first time. But Melbourne overcame its past demons. Dean Kent and then Jake Melksham putting the final nail in the coffin. But the heartache of 2017 is replaced by sheer joy. The Demons will be part of September. Scenes of unbridled joy after the siren. And for the Eagles, well, the defeat means they are in danger of losing their top two spot with Collingwood and Hawthorne not far behind. Big step, step for our footy club and uh, a really important one and something they should be incredibly proud of. And you know, I'm just so happy for our supporters right now. They've had 12 years of um, yeah, misery. Where they've, uh, but now they've got a team that they can really get in behind and support and you know, build some momentum from here. Look, if you had said at the start of the year, the last round of the year, you're playing uh, an away game for the second spot on the ladder, I think we would have taken it. So that's what's up for grabs. We can't miss top four now, I don't think. What a relief, though, for Dees fans. Well, the Swans have staged another Buddy-inspired fight back to reel in the Giants in the Sydney Derby on Saturday. And in the process, they've locked in an incredible 20th finals appearance in 23 years. GWS, on the other hand, are again counting the cost from a growing injury list. Co-captain Callan Ward wasn't giving an inch and his troops followed suit to give the Giants a handy buffer at the main break. But injuries to Jeremy Finlayson and Phil Davis proved pivotal as Buddy Franklin took the game by the scruff of the neck, surging to a five-goal haul in a six-goal to one last term. Will Hayward adding the gloss on the final siren. For one more goal to wrap it all up, can he beat the siren? He suckers it through Will Hayward. That'll do it for the Swans. The result having a massive bearing on the finals. The Giants at risk of missing out on the top four. At the expense of their rivals, the Swans fate largely in their hands when they face Hawthorne in the last round. Well, unfortunately, the Kangaroos season is over. Their faint finals hopes snuffed out by the Crows in a nine-point margin at Adelaide Oval on Sunday. North started brightly through Jared Waite and Big Goldie as the skipper Jack Siebel made his presence felt in the middle. But the Crows' class took control in the second quarter with four unanswered goals. Seedsman was on a massive high too. If only he'd held on to this grab. What a leap, though. Will walk hobbled off for the Roos and Tom Duday had to be helped from the field after a tough collision with Jed Anderson. The home side was up by 37 points late in the third quarter before the Roos went berserk. Jared Waite central to bringing them within striking distance. Enter Eddie Betts. Kick to the top of the oh! The ace in the pack was <laughs> stuff. Matt Crouch and Rory Laird shared 87 disposals between them. Crouch taking the record for the most handballs in an AFL game with 35. A massive effort by him there. On to Hawthorne now and the Hawks' hopes of a top four finish are still alive after a very narrow four-point win over a gutsy St Kilda outfit on Saturday night. The signs looked ominous early for the Saints. The razor-sharp Hawks carving up their opposition as they moved the ball seamlessly from coast to coast. But the Saints fought back, making the Hawks pay for some costly mistakes to peg back the margin. The Hawks threw in some sly hand signals as they tried to steady the ship. This is a set play by Gunston. Is that a little signal there, Richard? Yeah. The little set play. Dex finger. The loss of defender James Frawley didn't seem to bother the Hawks in the third term as luck fell their way. The Saints once again, though, clawing their way back in the last, but couldn't finish the job as the Hawks held on in yet another nail-biter. 
Hawthorne hang on in a thriller. And they keep their hopes of a top four spot alive. A great performance there from Jack Gunston, who came away with Best on Ground honours. Time now for what's making news on social media, and it's the challenge that's taking the world by storm. Soccer fans everywhere trying to replicate Tottenham star Delhi Ali's unique goal celebration. The hashtag Delhi Challenge making its way onto the hallowed turf of the MCG on Saturday, with a couple of magpies trying their hand at it, some more successfully than others. And their post-goal efforts might need just a little bit of work, but there was no doubting the rest of the Pies' play. Steamrolling Port Adelaide by 51 points at the G to keep their top four hopes alive. So much on the line for both sides, and it showed for much of the afternoon with both teams trading blows. Travis Varco front and centre to kick a goal in his 200th game, while Jared Pollock made mince meat of Madgen in this slick move. But a dubious 50-metre penalty against a silly Stevie Motlop handed Adam Oxley a goal in his first senior game since 2016. And it was all black and white from there, Collingwood kicking seven goals to one in the final term. Oh, Stevenson, he does it time and time again. The loss has put Adelaide in danger of missing the finals. Coach Ken Hinckley says his side didn't handle the pressure. It's a good question to ask the, for us to ask ourselves, and you know whether we're up for the for the challenge and the fight. And we have been most of the year. When the, in the last four or five weeks, we've felt the we've felt the pinch, and we, um, as I said, we took a couple of big body blows, and we weren't able to keep coming. And um, today, we we showed we looked like a team that it wasn't ready to keep going. And um, hopefully, that's not the case because we've got a big game next week, and we'll see what the ladder looks like at the end of the round, and give ourselves every chance. A disappointed Ken Hinckley there. Well, it's no surprise Saturday night's Q Clash turned out to be a fiery encounter. Lion Nick Robertson sparked things during the week, labelling the Suns soft. And it was on before the first bounce, Gold Coast keen to prove him wrong. Tensions boiling over on several occasions as the Crosstown rivals wrestled for bragging rights. Took Miller and Dane Zorko renewed pleasantries. Miller once again getting the better of the star Lion, who was held to 17 touches, but it was Brisbane who had the last laugh, securing the four points. Zorko adding more fuel to the fire, though, at the final siren. Well, intriguing finish to this one. Of course, after the last kick clash, Zorko refused to shake Miller's hand. Just talk us through what happened then a few moments ago. I just said thanks for the game, mate, and shook his hand, and uh, yeah, good night. He did, he did really well again tonight. Down at the Cattery on Saturday, it was a completely different story. Geelong feeling the freeze with rain, hail and even a rainbow making conditions tricky for both sides. But it was the Dockers who froze. The Cats kicking a record 23, yes you heard right, 23 unanswered goals to thump Frio by 133 points. Tom Hawkins kicked six, Gaz booted goal number 400, while Tim Kelly put in another brilliant performance. Run on, run on, stroll through and get another one. The win, of course, puts the Cats back inside the top eight. Now, despite the obliteration being the Dockers' heaviest defeat in the club's history, coach Ross Lyon insists Frio is on the right track. He was asked about the rebuild in what was yet another awkward exchange with a reporter. Do you look around and see it's been done in two years anyway? Is that a yes or a no? Well, yeah, other teams have... Done it in two years. Two oh, years. Not, not the overall. No, how, how long? Know, a few years. What's a few? Three or four. Who's done it in three? I can't you don't know? That's OK. So what I'm saying is... So it's probably inappropriate for you to be able to answer the question too. Hashtag orcs. All right, from Ross's bake to the Tigers, Liam Baker for our play of the round. And Richmond's newest member of the mobile forward line kicked his first goal at AFL level against Essendon on the Friday night stage. His teammates sharing in the excitement, as did Channel 7 post-game. Come around here. Have a look on the monitor. We'll show you your first goal. Have a look at this. We've got, uh, got the replay set up here, so we'll just have a look at it. Here it is. Now, talk us through it. Yeah, Cassie was the one that gave it to him, and I just burnt him off and ran away, so probably should have got around him a bit more, but, yeah, it's good it went through. 
the reigning premiers made it 20 straight at the MCG in the eight-point win. The Bombers never threw in the towel, though, but butchered opportunities late in a loss that ends their finals aspirations. Daniel Rioli not far off taking the play of the round, though, in the last seconds. Son, run down by Rioli. What a chase by Rioli. Super stuff there. Well, no finals for the Blues or Bulldogs, but the boys from Witten Oval took home their third straight win in a low-scoring game at Etihad Stadium. It was an uninspiring display between two sides looking forward to next season. Cade Simpson did his best to lift the level. Carlton hit the front early in the last quarter through a controversial free kick to Paddy Dow before the flashpoint. Jed Lamb sparking a scuffle after hitting Marcus Bontempelli. A fan deciding to vent frustrations and was duly escorted out for throwing a bottle at Dale Thomas. The loss condemns Carlton to its fifth wooden spoon since 2002. To the ladder now and plenty of permutations ahead in next week's final round. The Tigers though are minor premiers for the first time since 1982. The Eagles need to beat the Lions next week away to hold on to second place. The Pies and Hawks round out the four. Geelong and Melbourne of course into the top H which is likely, unlikely sorry, to change now and it leaves the power just missing finals along with North Essendon and the Crows. The Blues as we mentioned before taking out Yet another wooden spoon. And that's another episode of In Case You Missed It Done and Dusted. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.